This is the Will Clayton Church of Christ in Humble, Texas. This is December 17th, 2023. Sunday evening message. There are many ways God pays back sin on earth. Many ways God pays back sin on earth. Galatians 6, 7 through 10 is our text. Part 5 is our subject of the day. And it is about Eli, the priest of God. Eli, the priest of God, let us turn to 1 Samuel, and we will go to 1 Samuel chapter 2. And we will look at what's going on here with Samuel. It's a great man that, and, and the thing of this lesson, this great man simply does not carry out what he's supposed to carry out. On some priests that are unruly because they're his sons. Uh, this can be applied to you dealing with your children, especially when they get grown. But you have only so much control of your children when they get grown. This is a case where your grown children are involved with the work of God and they're sinning. Like a lot of people have grown children involved with the work of God. And they are allowing their children to teach false doctrine. And that's what this is about, to practice things contrary to what God has said. Eli is not supposed to make a difference between his children or any other priest. And this is why we want to make sure, because it's easy for a person to say something against their child living immorally uh, in their home, or say something against their child living immorally, or doing things contrary to God uh, as they are uh, maybe in a distance from them in their own home. But it's a different challenge when they're in the church doing it. And that's what this is about. So it can be applied to don't make differences. Tell them what to do. But when they don't do what the Lord has said, here's what the problem is. Well, Eli does not do the job. His children have a leading post in the church, and he's not doing his job. So let us look at 1 Sam chapter 2. And we're going to look at beginning at verse 12. Now the sons of Eli were sons of Belial. They knew not the Lord. What is Belial? H1100. H1100. Without profit, worthlessness, by extension, destruction, wickedness, often in connection with other thoughts that it lists Belial. They are worthless saints. They were posted in the church. Priests by birthright, know the duties, mechanically carry them out, but they're worthless of spiritual value. Verse 13, and the priest's custom with the people was that when any man offered sacrifice, the priest's servant came. See, as a servant, while the flesh was in seething, with a flesh hook of three teeth in his hand, and he struck it in the pan. Or kettle, or cauldron, or pot. All that the flesh hook brought up, the priest took for himself. So they did in Shiloh, unto all the Israelites that came thither. What is the big deal about that? Well, here's the problem. The understanding is, is this is the Lord's portion. You're supposed to receive the person's sacrifice. And offer to the Lord. Yes, he doesn't eat it. Everybody knows that. But you can't have it. So he come with that hook and just whop, hit it. Yank a big piece. Do you imagine how much food they were accumulating? From every single Israelite sacrifice. They're living. Now you may say, what's the big deal about food? Man, people eat. You got, you're in a time of feasting now. All the way from like, man, beginning like. Whatever what we call Thanksgiving, all the way past New Year's celebration, food eating because people are joyous and alive and they're thinking about yes, Jesus Christ came to the earth at some point, so they want to thank God for that, and they're eating and they're seeing family and they have joy in their heart. Well, these people ate too, and people like good food. This is a portion in their mind. This is what the Lord did. He don't even eat. I want it for me. It's just wickedness. <laughs> But I want it. 
But this means something to God and it means something to the people who brought the sacrifice. Their mind is, that's for God. That's for God, not you. So let's see what is the result. Also, before they burnt the fat, watch this. The priest servant came and said to the man that sacrificed, give flesh to roast for the priest. For he will not have sodden flesh of thee, but raw. Why? Bigger piece of meat. Give me, give, give me this piece here. So he says, I want to cut something for the priest. He said, wait a minute, hold on. This is a burnt offering. Yeah, I know. Just let, let me cut this piece for the priest. See, this is, the thing you have to understand, brethren, is that there is a desire to have the food. It's a good food. But at the same time, you must understand I'm eating what God would get. So that's a different flavor. Yeah, give me that. It's going to burn it up, man. It's going to be all shriveled up. I don't want that. I want that fat part. Two problems. So he says, and if any man said unto him, let them not fail to burn the fat presently, and then take as much as thy soul desire. Then he would answer and say, nay, but thou shalt give it me now, and if not, I will take it by force. So the, the person bringing a sacrifice knows, hey, God says burn it because God says I want the fat to run to me. This is about spirituality. I want the best you got. Give it to me. Y'all take the rest. But they were like, I don't want that shriveled up piece of meat. I don't want that. I want that, that piece for you burn it all down. I want to taste that fat that God would get. He don't even eat it anyway. I want it. It's for man. But it's not. It's for God. It's the same way, brethren, when you bring a sacrifice of praise into God. Man don't touch that. We don't say no songs to the preacher, elder, deacon, Bible teacher, or to you, the members. We don't say no song in homage to you all. You understand? That's, that, that's all God. That's all for God. When we give the money, the money is given to the law, not to the, to the leadership. It's given to the law. A portion may go to an event or someone having need, but it's given to the Lord. You don't just give it to the people. That's why sometimes people say, I'd rather give my money to a person in need than to give it to the church. That's not how it's done. You give it to the church, and the church will give it to the need. As the Bible says, lay the money at their pots of feet. That's how we're going to do it. Or keep your money because you're not going to get credit for it anyway. God's going to hate you and your money. Both of you are going to perish. This is the system of God. It isn't about who eats it or if God needs money. It's about how did he say do it? They're violating. God has a problem. And he's so angry, he wants to kill them. But he wants this man to lead in the killing. And Eli's not going to do that to his sons. Okay, let's see what happens then. Because remember, what is the lesson about? God pays back sin in different ways. Why are we teaching this? Because God said teach it. Because he's showing, see, different ways I'll pay back. Because you might be looking, if you stole somebody's car, somebody's going to steal your car, so you got an extra lot. No, somebody's going to rob you and stab you in your back and kill you, possibly. See, it's different ways I'll pay back. I say, I, I, you don't tell me how to pay back. That's the idea. You don't know what's going to happen to you. So that's why we're telling you, don't practice sin. Here is sin practice in the worship of God. Let's see what the outcome will be. So they say, we'll take it by force. I'll snatch it out your hand. You know, you're like, what? Wherefore, the sin of the young men was very great before the Lord. For men abhorred the offering of the Lord. They hated to bring the offering because they know, dude, I could have ate that. And if I'm sacrificing it, then what are you doing? That's like somebody sacrificing their money and you take it and go a whoring with women as an evangelist or a Bible teacher or whatever. If you need money, like... I could have kept my money to pay bills. If you're going to take it to go horror, man, I hate to give because they put the money. I hate, man, I know they're going to do something crooked with it. Now, this is not the attitude God wants in the people giving. He wants everything to be above board and to do it right so that people will know, okay, it's going to be placed in God's hand. The people are going to do right because they're of God. But they know your boys are crooks, Eli. So what happens? It says, but Samuel ministered before the Lord, being a child, girded with a linen ephod. Moreover, his mother made him a little coat and brought it to him from year to year. When he came up with her husband to offer the year to sacrifice. And Eli blessed Elkanah and his wife and said, The Lord give thee seed of this woman, for the long which is sent lent to the Lord 
and they went unto their home. The Lord visited Hannah so that she conceived and bare three sons and two daughters. Five more children. Boy, he blessed Hannah. And the child Samuel grew for the Lord. So look at, El look at Eli. He's blessing people. He's still going through his duties. Great, but you didn't do what I told you. See, this is the problem with church leaders and members of the church. I do X, Y, Z, but I don't do A, B, C. It's okay. I, I, you know. No, it ain't okay. It's not okay. Because can you do A, B, C? Then why don't you? That's the difference. Now, Eli was very old. Note that. And heard all that his sons did unto all of Israel. And how they lay with the women that are sitting at the door of the town of the congregation. Now we've got a new thing. I take the big portion of meat while it's seething. Then I got another thing I take before you burn the fat. Give me that. I got my boys going to snatch it from me if you don't give it. And also I have sex with the women when they come for counseling. What a bunch of nasty, filthy children you have. Both of them. And he said unto them. Now he does go. Verse 23. Why do you use such things? For I hear of your evil dealings by all these people. Nay, my sons, for there's no good report that I hear. You make the lost people to transgress. If one man sin against another, the judge will judge, shall judge him. But if any man sin against the law, who shall entreat for him? Who's going to speak for a man who sins against the law? Notwithstanding, they hearken now to the voice of their father, because the Lord would slay them. And the child Samuel grew on with in favor, was in favor with both the Lord and with men. So they didn't listen. Now watch what happened. The Bible says it was God's intent to kill them. Y'all catch that? So that's why they wouldn't listen. See, God's intent, I'm going to kill y'all. The problem still is Eli, you're supposed to go back and check. Did y'all stop doing this? You didn't? So he's the priest. Call the people together. Come on. Y'all know the sins of my children. I shall grab the stone for Yeah, he can stone them because that's what's left to do to them. He can stone them because it is a like Jesus said. He would not sin cast the first stone. They're not repenting. The woman is going to repent. They're not repenting. So we're going to keep doing this. So no, you can't let them continue to do that. That's the difference. So he is supposed to stone them with stones. Because they have sinned against God. They are supposed to be stoned. And this is the problem. And this is what you and I must recognize. And this is what we must continue. We stone with the rock Jesus. We throw the words of the Lord at them to rebuke them. And then remove them if they do not repent. This is the way that the Lord would have us to do. 1 Corinthians 5 is very clear on that. To withdraw and to speak against this individual. And this is what you and I have to do, brethren. This is the teaching of the Lord. If anyone should bring forth a different pattern of doing the Lord's will, he is supposed to be removed from this type of work because God wants to kill them. Now, let's see if God's going to say that. And we're going to see if, if Ozan's lying. Okay, now let's read this to find out what the Lord going to do. Verse 27. And there came a man of God unto Eli. Watch. He sent somebody and said unto him, Thus said the Lord, that I plainly appear unto the house of thy father. When they were in Egypt, in Pharaoh's house. So he goes all the way back. I'm all the way back with Aaron. And I did choose him out of all the tribes of Israel to be my priest, to offer upon my altar, to burn incense, to wear an ephod before me. And did I give unto the house of thy father all the offerings by fire of the children of Israel. He says, you know, I mean, I'm giving y'all food. It's enough. You got more than you need. Wherefore well, kick ye at my sacrifice and at my offering, which I have commanded in my habitation, and honorest thy sons above me. Honorest thy sons above me. Honorest thy sons above me. Here's where the problem lies. To make yourselves fat with the chiefest of all the offerings of Israel my people. So he says, make yourself. He said, yeah, they're doing it, but you're a part of this group. But for the Lord God of Israel said, I said indeed that thy house and house thy father should walk before me forever. But now the Lord said, be it far from me. 
For them that honor me, I will honor. And they that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. Okay, does that sound like, okay, well, you know, if you despise me, it's just people not going to look at you the same. But that goes with a punishment. But if people don't look at you the same as a faithful saint, God punishes you. It ain't going to be just they're not going to look at you the same. I, I'm going to take you. I'm going to take you out. Now watch what he says. Verse 32. He says, uh, well, let's go to verse 31. Behold, the days come that I will cut off thine arm and the arm of thy father's house, that thou shalt not be an old man in thine house. And shall, thou shalt see an enemy in my habitation. In all the wealth which God shall give Israel, there shall not be an old man in thine house forever. See, first he says, you're going to walk with me forever. Then he says, I'm fixing to show, I'm going to cut off all y'all. None of y'all going to get old around me. I'm going to kill all y'all forever. And the man of thine, whom I shall not cut off from mine altar, shall be to consume thine eyes and to grieve thine heart. And all the increase of thine house shall die in the flower of their age. So it says, the one that I let live, he going to be miserable. He going to bring so much sorrow. He'll be like, man, my God, I wish he would have been one of the ones that got cut off. He says, and they're going to all die in the flower of their age and their strength and their youth. And this shall be a sign unto thee that shall come upon thy two sons on Hophni and Phineas. These are the ones that sleep with the women, taking the meat. And one day they shall die, both of them. And I will raise up me a faithful priest that shall do according to that which is in mine heart and in my mind. And I will build him a sure house. And he shall walk before my Lord forever. Of course, he got to walk right too. See, because forever don't mean forever if you change pattern on the Lord. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is left in thine house shall come and crouch to him for a piece of silver and a morsel of bread and shall say, put me, I pray thee, into one of the priests of him that I may eat a piece of our bread. A piece of bread. It's not happening. He said, it was supposed to be for you, but I'm going to raise up a different priest. <clears throat> so chapter 3, the child Samuel ministered to the Lord before Eli and the word of the Lord was Pressure those days, that was no open vision. See, it was precious, man. No open vision, man. My goodness. It was, you're like, whoo, man, tell me what the Lord is saying. Came okay, to pass that at that time when Eli was laid down in his place and his eyes began to wax dim that he could not see. And ere the lamp of God went out in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was and Sammy was laid down to sleep. That the Lord called Sammy and answered, Here am I. And he ran to Eli and said, Here am I. For thou callest me. And he said, I called not. Lie down again. He went and laid down. And the Lord called yet again, Samuel. And Samuel rose and again went to Eli and said, Here am I. For thou didst call. And he answered, I called not, my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the law. What does that mean? I'm serving. I'm learning to be the priest because I am one of the priests. And I'm young. But I don't have a relationship yet with the Lord. Well, we can connect and he's going to talk to me and tell me things. That hasn't happened yet. And so he says, uh, neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed unto him. Hasn't been revealed as it is revealed, obviously, unto prophets. He knew the Bible, but uh, any writings before, but he did not have the word revealed to him like it's done for a prophet. Because Samuel is a priest and a prophet. And the Lord called Samuel again a third time. And he arose and went to Eli and said, Here am I, for thou didst call me. And Eli perceived that the Lord had called the child. See, now Eli knows that if it's a voice, it must be the Lord. Well, why didn't you go do something to your voice if you got this such good depth self? Because I'm weak. That's why. Therefore Eli said and said, Go lie down, and it shall be. If he called thee, thou shalt say, Speak, Lord, for thy servant hear it. So Samuel went, and laid down in his place. And the Lord came and stood. You know, he told Samuel what to do. Why you can't. You know what's amazing to me. You can tell somebody else to do. But you can't tell yourself what to do. You can't go tell. Okay now y'all. We know we're supposed to stone these boys. I got to remove from the priesthood. Like. Uh, Nadab and the guy who got torched with fire. Okay. We pretty well got the lesson. Now we have to get rid of them. But you can tell Samuel what to do. This is how weak leaders are. They can tell you what to do. They can get this done. But, but they don't know what to do with their own case. This is sad. And, and definitely not to their honor. And so therefore. He lied down again. 
And look what happens now. Eli tells him, okay, if he speaks, this is what you say. Verse 10. Lord came and stood and called out the time, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel answered, speak for thy servant here. And the Lord said unto Samuel, now this is the young man, the young child. Behold, I will do a thing in Israel at which both the ears of everyone that hear it shall tingle. In that day I will perform against Eli all things which I have spoken concerning his house. When I begin, I will also make an end. This is, Eli is the priest. Okay? It's supposed to continue with him. Okay? He, he, he's at Shiloh. But the problem is, is he's not walking right, so God's going to have to take another priest. For I told him that I will judge his house forever for the iniquity which he know it. Did you see that? Which he know it. Which he know it. He knows it. Not do it. He knows. So what is he not doing? Punishing that church leader for not teaching right and doing right. So he knows it though. And that's what's going to happen to a lot of saints. They know of it but won't do nothing about it. Because his sons made themselves vile and he restrained them not. See he didn't. See he told them but he's got to restrain them. How? Remove them. Get them out of them. And therefore I swore unto the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be purged with sacrifice nor offering forever. He said, this sin can't be removed with no sacrifice. Samuel lay until the morning and opened the doors of the house of the Lord and Samuel feared to show Eli the vision. Samuel just, just laid down till in the morning. Man, man, I don't want to tell him this. This is a dude been training me. He's been teaching me all this. I can't go tell him God going to kill him and his son. Then Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son, and he answered, here am I. And he said, what is the thing that the Lord said unto thee? I pray thee, hide it not from me. God do so to thee. And more also, if thou hide anything from me of all things that he said unto thee. Look at all the teaching. I'm going to tell you, hear the voice, it's the law. This is what to do. Go lay down. When he tell you again, say, here am I, Lord. And then now, okay, the boy gets down. What did he tell you? Don't hide it from me because the Lord will punish you too. You can tell everybody but yourself to teach truth. What's wrong with this picture, saints? My goodness. Is this not the type of leader we have in the church of Christ today? This is ridiculous. So let's see the outcome. And Samuel told him everything or every wit and he had nothing from him. And he said, it is the Lord. Let him do what seemeth him good. And Samuel grew, and the Lord was with him, and did let none of his words fall to the ground. That means when Samuel said you saw going to happen, it happened. Because he listened to what the Lord said. And Sam, he says, and all Israel from Dan, even the Beersheba, knew that Samuel was established to be a prophet of the Lord. And the Lord appeared again in Shiloh, for the Lord revealed himself to Samuel in Shiloh by the word of the Lord. Now here we have a situation. That's going to develop. And this is the problem. Verse 1. Chapter 4. And the word of Samuel came to all Israel. And Israel went out against the Philistines to battle. And pitched beside Ebenezer. And the Philistines pitched in Aphek. And the Philistines put themselves in array against Israel. And when they joined battle. Israel was smitten before the Philistines. And they slew of the army in the field about 4,000 men. And when the people were come into the camp. The elders of Israel said. Wherefore hath the Lord smitten us. Today, before the Philistines, let us fetch the ark of the covenant of the Lord out of Shiloh unto us, that when it shall come among us, it may serve, save us out of the hands of the enemy. Normally, this will work. You got two crooks in the camp. Hophni and Phinehas and a third one, Eli the priest. So the people went, so the people sent to Shiloh that they might bring from thence the ark of the covenant of the Lord of hosts, which dwelleth between the cherubims. And the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, were there with the ark of the covenant. This is the normal battle victory guaranteed lockdown. You bring the ark, the two priests stand there with it. Go to battle. You got two crooks here having sex with the women coming for counseling. And eating the Lord's portion on two different levels. And you're going to stand by the ark and you think the Lord going to, man, you lost your mind. Let's, let's, let's read the juicy details of this payback from the God of vengeance. He's a God of second chances and he's a God of payback. 
One more time, he's a God of second chance, and he's a God of payback. And he said, he told us both. I, I, I take vengeance. I take vengeance. On the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, I'll pay you back. And your children, if they act crazy like you. So let's see what happened. He says, uh, so the people sent to Shiloh. They got them people by the ark, the two crooks, verse 5. And when the ark of the covenant of the Lord came into the camp, all Israel shouted with a great shout. So that the earth rang again. Now listen, does that sound like victory? The earth rang. The Lord made this shout so strong that it like just, woo, like, is this an earthquake? And when the Philistines heard the noise of the shout, they said, what means the noise of this great shout in the camp of the Hebrews? And they understood that the ark of the Lord was coming to the camp. And the Philistines were afraid. For they said, God is coming to the camp. And they said, woe unto us, for there had not been such a thing heretofore. See, the problem is, is not, this is, the, this, is the, this is the battle pattern. When you shout like that, and everybody get nervous and like, man, there's a new thing. Oh, man, God, no, we already know about this, God. It's over for us. They said it's over. Now watch what happens. Sounds good, but God is letting them know. I would normally be with you. But you got two crooks on site and a third one orchestrated. Brethren, you got to understand something. When you know when people doing stuff crooked in a church, like this online worship foolishness, somehow you think if it doesn't draw me in and I worship online, I'm okay. Your enemy going to get you somewhere else. Your enemy might be your wife may run out on you and start fooling with me and your husband may fool around. You don't know. Ask the king during Amos Day. He said, your wife going to be a prostitute because you shouldn't have came and talked to me like that. I just told you go back and prophesy that. Or your wife going to be a prostitute. No. When would a queen need to be a prostitute for? Please. You know how embarrassing it is for a stupid king can't control his queen? Get rid of her. But the point is, it's still no. Man, your wife trying to be a prostitute. Dude, what's the problem? God not with you. Your children could become just ragged. They could even try to kill you. Like Sennacherib's kids. We talked about a lesson like that already. You can lose your job, lose your health, lose your mind. And you know you're losing your mind. It's going to be known you're losing your mind. You know, you walked outside yesterday and shouted and went back, I ain't do that yet. We got it on camera. You, 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 I'm losing my mind. Because you know something in the church you ain't saying nothing about. That's the problem. You won't battle for it. And it's not going to take you. Something else going to get you. That's why we're talking about this. All this Christian suffering, not always Christian suffering. Some of this is God payback. Because we don't do what we're supposed to. You sit up here and let this guy talking about having women up singing. And you won't say nothing. And you wonder why you suffer. You're getting paid. Paid in full. And you're going to go to hell too. On top of that at the end. He want to bring in instrument. I don't want to sound like an instrument. You know what that text say. And then when stuff. Now 10 years later when some payback hit you. Chris said something. You better, if you ain't said nothing about that fool you saw before. Somebody going to tell you baby that's how you get paid back for the way you've been acting a fool in the church. Letting stuff go. That's how we are. I'm not a leader. I'm a woman. So what? Jael wasn't a leader. She was a woman. She drove a nail through the man's head. Why did she give him some milk? We tight. We friends. Come on in there. Give some milk. He won't. Pow. Hey, I got him in here. He dead. I understand that. That's the understanding and comprehension. Barack is told, it's not going to be for no victory. It's going to be a woman going to take him out. They all know it's going to be a woman going to take him out. And this is what happened. So she cleared herself of the food. She didn't break me and say, come on, sit down here. Wait till they leave. No, you, you can't be rescued like Rahab rescued them. You're a crook. That's the problem. So let's see what happens. So look at verse 8. Woe to us, they say again. Who shall deliver us out of the hands of these mighty gods? They are the gods that smote the Egyptians with all the plagues in the wilderness. Everybody know the story. The Philistines know the story. Be strong. Now look what one of them says. Somebody said, be strong. Quit yourselves like men. Act like men. Oh, you Philistines. 
that you be not servants with unto these Hebrews as they have been to you. Quit yourselves like men and fight. God comes over this side and says, okay, take that enthusiasm, put it in their hearts, go with my children because they're crooked because they got two crooked saints there. All this suffering, we done told Eli. Now I'm going to tell you what the people are supposed to do. They're supposed to have an Eli, Hockney, and Phineas. And that's why they're going to lose the ark in the battle. Saints is one thing because they're stealing the money. They stay running women with he buying cars for his girlfriend on the side. But it's also something you're supposed to do by it. Not just talk. Do. Do. Action. If it's a relative. Too bad. Verse 10. And the Philistines fought and Israel was smitten. Look at that. And they fled every man to his tent. And that was a very great sorrow. For thou fell of Israel 30,000 for first they lost 4,000, now they lost 30. Now you know when a person hear this story, when they hear this story, their mind is so weak. They go, they're not the same thing. And then watch God tatty them up. Some people got to go to and say, baby, from my observation, you're getting whooped by Jesus. Because you, you, you didn't do your job. You know, that's all I can tell you. Let them suffer. This is it. And the ark of God was taken. Did you see verse 11? The ark. How come it didn't kill the Philistine when they touched it? Let's steal it. Like it killed poor Uzzah. Because God said, I want it out your hand, you bunch of crooks. You got these boys having sex with these women, taking my portion. He ain't going to do nothing. Y'all don't want to do nothing to him. Then you're mad. We have hoard the offering. But it became a sin because now you bring the offering you hate it. When they say we're going to take it by force, you know what they're supposed to do? You know what you're supposed to do when a priest comes up to you and say we're going to take it by force? This is the Lord's property. Come on. Come on to fill this steel. Because we're going to fight that God give us his. They could have killed all them priests and God wouldn't have done nothing. But say, okay, I got another one coming to serve. Because they would have refused to let you take God's offering. And you see what Nehemiah did? He chased the priests off. They were just ready. He said, get out of here. That's what you do. Get them out of here. But if you're going to pull out a sword on me, I'm going to drop you. Why? Because this is for God's glory. So we got an internal wall. Israel versus Israel. We got an internal wall. But I'm not valuing like that. Yeah, it's not my business. I brought my am. I'm going to the house. That's on him. That's on him. When you tell them they beat bass singing, y'all can't accept this. That's on them. So let's see what's going to happen in your life then. We're going to watch your life. It ain't always Christian suffering, bro. It's not always Christian suffering. Better check yourself before you wreck yourself. And I mean every word I say. Verse 11, and the ark of God was taken. Two sons of Hoth and Phileas were saying, look, they came up to the ark. <laughs> Kill them. Whack. Give me the ark. How come they didn't die? These are uncircumcised Philistines. How come they didn't die? They touched that gold wood. Grab it. No death. Because God says, I want you to take it, fella. Uzzah just tries to stop it from falling. Bam. Instant death. You see how God shifts? He will shift and give your enemy power to take you over. He will whoop you and all that was supposed to be yours will be taken. Everybody on the street laying in their urine, drinking beer and whiskey, smoking weed. Asking you for money is not that because of suffering. It's because you're a criminal. Some of you are there because you're criminals. And you need to die out there. Why? Because you turned your back on God. And that's your payment. You got to understand, bro. You don't want to throw stuff over the Christian suffering. A poor old soul. You don't know what that person did. So take everything with a grain of salt. Tell them something about Jesus. Watch him like a fool with you. Hello. Anyway, we're going to wrap this up. It's, it's some heavy metal, so we're going to wrap this up. And there ran a man of Benjamin out of the army and came to Shiloh the same day with his clothes rent and herbs upon his head. That don't mean nothing. Should have thought about that when you were giving an offering to them crooked boys taking my meat. And when he came to Eli, sat upon a seat by the wayside watching. For his heart trembled for the ark of God. And when the man came into the city and told him, all the city cried out. So here's Eli. He's sitting down. And he's nervous. Man, the all going, what's going to happen now? But, oh, you know, oh, it was sounding pretty smooth and word out your mouth. 
than the Lord. So do as he say. Do when the Lord put his hands on you. You think that's going to make him change your mind because then so be because the Lord said. Man, the Lord get a hold of you. He let you know I got you. You so nervous. You sitting on some wood and you a chunky fella and you old. You're chunky, half blind and old. That's Eli. That's the girl we just read. And he's scared. Dude came in the city and said, man, they got the ark. Whoa! That don't mean nothing to God. All that emotion. Take your emotion and go. I'm not going to save y'all. Oh, that shouting. It sounded good when that ark came all the earth rang. The Lord said, no, you know, yeah, y'all think I'm with you. Y'all watch it. Uh, whoop them. They ain't going to touch my ark, too. I'm not going to do nothing to you. Take it. I'd rather a criminal have it than y'all. Because I'm going to get it back anyway. Let's see what happens. And when Eli heard the noise of crying, he said, what meaneth the noise of this tumult? And the man came and hastened and told Eli, now, Eli was 98 years old, old, chunky, and having trouble seeing. And his eyes were dim that he could not see. And the man said unto Eli, I am he that came out of the army, and I fled today out of the army. And he said, What is there done, my son? And the messenger answered and said, Israel fled before the fifth sign, and there had been also a great slaughter among the people. And thy two sons, Hophni and Phinehas, are dead, and the ark of God is taken. And it came to pass, when he had mention of the ark of God, that he fell from off the seat backward by the side of the gate and break his neck, and he died, for he was an old man and heavy. Rolled like a ball off of that seat. And he had judged Israel 40 years. I see that. Now, I ain't about to put a sword in him. <laughs> His son didn't come kill him. Huh? Oh! He broke his neck. Well, this is a very rough death. But I don't like you. You know, all this could have been prevented. You already know the rules. When the man comes and tells you, I'm going to cut off all your people. You just go, oh, no, well. A lot of saints are like that. Hey, this is going to help. Oh, well. You're going to hear that before you die. You gonna hear it? You may hear it before you die. I don't know. So then you tell brother, man, you know, we're going to do it, but thing will change. What can we do? <laughs> what? You better get away from that fool before the Lord strike him right there and you. What can we do? You forgot the Bible? That's what we can do. Nevertheless, this is a very ugly death. And his daughter-in-law, finished his wife, was with child, near to be delivered. And when she heard the tidings of the ark of God was taken, and her father-in-law and her husband were dead, she bowed herself in travail for her pains to come upon her. And about the time of her death, the women stood by her. Fear not, for thou hast born a son. But she answered not, neither did she regard it. Uh, she like, man, this is not the joy no more. And she named the child Ichabod, saying, The glory is departed from Israel because the ark of God was taken because her father-in-law and her husband there. She said, The glory is departed from Israel for the ark of God was taken. So she said, well, You got a baby. Man, what, what's the name of Ichabod? The glory of the Lord is gone, man. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's normally happy. It's not. You know how with the baby? Name him Ichabod. The glory of the Lord is gone, man. The ark is gone. We shot with just another nation. It means nothing now. And that's what happened. That's what happened to the Church of Christ with all your phony, fake worships, online foolish. You're just like this. You're too scared to go handle old pastor. Old pastor in the Church of Christ. Too scared to go tell him, man, we need to stop online worship. He don't even know how to do it. You know, I can really start the online worship. The one that know how to do it, child, I'm not doing it no more. Better get somebody else because I'm not doing them all. Hand so I'm not handing over nothing. I don't even want to touch it. That's poison. That's blood, but I don't even want to touch it. I'm not telling you nothing. I'm turning my heart to God. You fix it yourself. See, people don't know how to do that. And then you need to warn others. Hey, man, don't do that online stuff for them. That's why I let it go. Say, God will get in your life and mess your life. You better not do that for that clown. Now, nah, I'm not going to be able to do it, Pastor. You know, somebody better wake up. What about the other guy? Doesn't he know electron? Yeah, but yeah, but you know, we used to help you go to school. Yeah, but you asked me to sin. Now, I'm not gonna do that, brother. I'm sorry. But you don't got nobody to do that. I do it. I do it like a little puppet. I do it. And then watch somebody get in his life. 
Brother, I'm trying to warn you. I love you. I'm just telling you, my message is done. It's yours now. You do what you want with it, but I'm going to do what God say do with it. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 15. I take, I take this serious. I don't have time to play. All suffering ain't Christian suffering. I got a lot of suffering. I don't put in the Christian suffering box because I know who you are. First Corinthians 15 and verse 3. That don't mean nothing to you because it ain't going to change either way, but I know it means a lot to me to judge righteous. First Corinthians 15 3. Well, I'll deliver you first of all that which y'all sorry. See, you got a Christ die for our sins according to the scriptures. Sometimes got to be according to the scriptures. He says, and that he was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. If this was, let me shout something with you about believing. Fools who tell you this was wrote by a man. Let me ask you something. Do you really think that a psalmist can write down and prophesy about the death of a man that's going to come hundreds of years later hoping he's going to be born from a woman that they claim as a virgin? You think somebody got that kind of power? You'd have lost your mind. You think I'm going to write something that heavy prophecy? He going to ride on a donkey and it's going to happen as I wrote it. You believe the Bible wrote about man, you a fool. You need to go to hell. And I mean with all my heart. You really think somebody going to write the New Testament and talk about stuff that we see now and it happened. And that's a dude wrote it. You deserve hell. You blasphemer. That's the word of God. You little blasphemer on the earth. Man, you die. In hell, for hell. You're, you're disrespecting. You think somebody can guess that? You know how hard? And I'm going to name him Cyrus. I'm going to just pick a name. Mm, Cyrus. So I'm Isaiah. I'm Ronan. I'm a man. I wrote it. I'm going to pick Cyrus, a king of a third rule nation. You got Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon. Then you got Medo Persian. I'm going to pick the Persian cat. Call him Cyrus. And it's one day he's going to step out and say, I'm going to build a temple to the God that gave me this power. I have no way of doing that. But if God said it's going to happen, I'm going to write. That's why hell is full of us, brethren. Hell is full of saints. Because we like to do that. But God has a way of paying you before you leave sometime and after you go. That's why I'm going to teach this. To warn you and me. He rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Goes to a list of who saw. Look at Mark 16. So you think Mark could have made this up? I know, but that's about Jesus. It's still, I don't see the book of Jesus. It's the book of Mark. So Mark made this up. He that believe in baptized shall be saved. He that believe not shall be damned. So go into our world, preach the gospel every creature. Mark made that up. Mm. So Mark made up the part where they write about in the other gospels. All the other gospel writers, they write. So Matthew, Luke. John, when they say that Jerusalem will be destroyed and they pinpoint it would happen at a certain time and Jerusalem is nothing but foolishness now. So you say a man wrote that? You think a man has a power to control the heart of a Roman and say so he's going to come in somehow and want to destroy what he already getting plenty of tax money from. But Rome has in their heart, I hate them. Get them out of my city. That's not enough. They still talking trash. Burn the city down. Kill. Tear that temple up. Kill all of them. I want all the Jews murdered. That's why you have to run for the hill. Head for the hill. Because that's a prophecy from God that said, this is my payback. I've been talking about it for hundreds of years. I'm finna make you no more a nation. Whatever left of y'all, you're just another group like Americans. You're nothing to me. Just another. But if you become a Christian, you'll be something. You think a man could have wrote that? I laugh every time somebody say, written by a man, you think a man could have wrote that, can pinpoint that Rome was going to do that? You a fool. You think a man can control another man's heart? The, Jeremiah said the heart is desperately wicked. He says, who can know it? You can't know the heart. You can never make a man, even if you put his name there, you couldn't make him do it. Who's going to support him? Who? The other people got to support The whole nation? Because his name's out? Man, please. Rome couldn't control their own nation that good. So you better watch people that talk like that. Let's look at Acts chapter 2 verse 36. There's so many ways to kill a lie like shooting fish in a barrel. 
Acts 2.36, Therefore let our house of Israel know surely God made that same Jesus whom crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in the heart, said to Peter, to the rest of your apostles, men and brothers, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the mission of sin, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you, and to your children, and to all that are far, even as many as the Lord our God shall call, and with men of the word that he testified and exhort, saying, Save yourself, because you're on your way to hell. Save yourself from this entourage old snake like generation then they that God received his word baptized and the same day they were asking about 3,000 souls they continued steadfast in the apostle doctrine fellowship and breaking of bread and in prayers Acts 2 47 praising God had faith with all the people in the law added to the church daily such as should be saved Acts chapter 8 and verse number 35 this guy being at church headed back reading the Bible and he still cannot figure out Isaiah 53 he asks in verse 34, Acts 8, 34, and the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee of whom speaketh the prophet this, of himself or some other man. Why is he so dumbfounded? He's not dumb. The Holy Ghost is just not giving the answer. He's not a saint. And these denominational churches will not know the answer either to any of this unless it had been written by this man. Luke, who was a member of the church of Christ. Then Philip opened his mouth, began the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. As they went on the way, they came to certain water. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What the hell of me to be baptized? And Philip said, If thou believe with all thy heart, thou mayest. He answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He commanded child to stand still. They went down both to the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. Now he can glorify God. And now he say, Before the end, He's in danger. First Corinthians 12, 13, for by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have all been made to drink into one spirit. First Peter 3, 21, it saves the like figure, whereas the even baptisms is also now save us, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience taught God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ who has gone into heaven on the right hand of God. Angels, authorities, and powers being made subject unto him. Revelation 2.10, fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that you may be tried. You shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. This is the hope of the saint. Not the sinner. The sinner has no hope. Paul describes the sinner in Ephesians chapter 2. He describes very plainly all throughout that Ephesian letter chapter 3 and all throughout the writings that you are outside the presence of Israel having no hope and without God on the earth. That's as bad as it can get for the Gentile. Baptist, Catholic, Methodist, Muslim, Buddhist, Hindu, Jehovah's Witness. No hope. No connection to the promise of Israel without God. And that's why we got to go and teach him the gospel before it's too late. Look at, if you will, Acts chapter 19. We'll wrap up here, verse number 1. Acts 19, 1. The Bible says, And it came to pass, and while the apostles that called and part and passed the upper coast, came to Everson, finding certain disciples, he said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost, and you believe? That's an easy answer, brother. They said unto them, We have not so much to hear of that being the Holy Ghost. He said to them, unto what do you baptize? They said unto John's baptism. Then said Paul, John truly baptized the baptism of repentance. Saying to the people that they should believe on him, which should come after him. That is on Christ Jesus. And when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. That's so easy. But you know what? With my heart not right, easy don't mean nothing, brother. Easy don't mean nothing. I don't want to do what's right. I'm not right. I'm going to do what I want. And I want you to pray for me that everything's going to be all right. But it's not going to be all right. Pray all this. It's not going to be all right. If you need to be baptized, stay standing when we sit down. If you need to be baptized, call the number. Touch the word more under the title. You keep touching. It will show you phone numbers. Call. We will direct you where to be baptized. If you need prayer, stay standing. If you're too tired, hold your hand up. If you need prayer, you can call the number. We can pray for you also. And our prayer will be heard by law. If it don't happen, it's because the law don't want you to have it. But we know our prayer will be heard. We know he hears us. The Bible tells us because his spirit witnesses with us that we are the children of God. One of the things I understand about life is precious. It is temporal on the earth, eternal by spirit. Either you'll be tortured in hell forever or you will be comforted in heaven forever. Either way, you're not going to stop existing. The worm don't die. Now, you can believe who you want, but that's what the text says. 
The reason I want to discredit people saying the Bible is written by man, because that makes man God himself. Therefore, he can tell the future. How come we ain't got no more writing right now? That's because we didn't write it. And God is through writing. You have to accept in your heart. Promote spiritual life, yours, by listening to the Bible, coming to church, and doing the things the scriptures tell you. Ask for forgiveness when you fail. Ask saints to pray for you when you fail. Also, in addition to that, promote your physical life. Do the things that will protect and enhance your life. Do the things that will protect you and the lives of others. Speak up for the innocent before it's too late for them and you. Whatever you need, come now. Together we stand and sing heaven's invitation.